Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, it's uh, St. Patrick's Day in Dublin, Orange County, and uh, we had a city council meeting yesterday. Mayor Best, thank you Good as always you. for joining us on the show. Uh, during the month of March, we have a noon That's council right. meeting, so That's we right. switch things up just a little bit. Uh, but the agenda, we still follow protocol. Um, the the minutes were approved yep. from the previous meeting. No additions or revisions yep. there, and uh, bills. We're paid. We paid all the bills and any purchases. Did we have any any no purchases, purchases over three thousand um, dollars? We had a lot of zoning ordinances that were addressed at That's the council right. meeting yesterday. And the first one on the agenda is the first reading of an ordinance to rezone 0.41 acres located at 212 Coney Street from single family residential to multi family residential. Talk okay. to me about that. Well, the uh PNZ voted unanimously to deny that rezoning request. This was our first reading, so we will have a public hearing and second reading on it uh, at our next meeting. I think it's April 6th. Okay. Uh, if I, I may be off a day, but I think that's right. Uh, it's, it's spot zoning. So, I, you know, I don't know how I can certainly not speak for my council. They may vote another way, but I think if we follow the... Uh, typical uh, the way things the are way we've done before point. it's it's spot zoning and we we don't spot zone and so you're you're telling me planning and zoning has said no that's to right this currently that's right and we then, just have to either accept or not accept their recommendation okay um, and then the any further discussion on that or no not really so first readings that? there's not usually many discussions okay um, the next item was a reading of an ordinance to annex uh, about an acre and a half um, of professional, um, I guess, land zoned That's as professional right. um, at 165, land lot 165, City of Dublin. What's that is the time? corner of Industrial Boulevard and uh, Moore Station Road. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd Yates is the owner or the representative for the owner, and I think they're doing a uh, a medical office of some sort uh, for a company, and uh, that is uh, the second reading in public hearing will also be April 6th. Okay, and is that where the uh, is there an old drugstore there? No, this is uh, this is across from the old folks home or the nursing home, McCray mm -hmm. Man, uh, excuse me, uh, Dublin Air. Okay, uh, right there on that corner. Okay. Got it. Um, the next one is a reading of an ordinance to repeal or replace Chapter 5, Animals and Fowl, um, the code for ordinance for the city of Dublin. Okay, that is uh, that stems from uh, an intergovernmental agreement we have with the county. Uh, what happened several weeks ago or a month or two ago, it was determined that uh, in House Bill uh, I think it was 470 years ago, which was a bill put together for the county and the city to find services that they could consolidate and mm -hmm. do that. House, I forget what house bill it was, but anyway, it uh, it that was done then. We we combined our animal control, and the county looks after that for the entire city. But because of a quirk in the law, the uh, city. Uh, cases could not be tried by the county magistrate unless we got an intergovernmental agreement. Okay. So that's what started the process of, of doing this. We did that. Uh, our attorney, Josh Powell, met with uh, Tommy Bobbitt, the uh, magistrate court judge, and with uh, um, Brian Rogers and with Don Bryant, the EMT guy. And they worked out what we need to do, and I think they're just cleaning up some things like the leash law and uh, sanctuary city for birds and just doing now, some this, other things. Uh, and I'm just asking because yeah. I don't know about this. Would folks who, who maybe they want to have a, a chicken coop in their yard or that's, something? That's part of it. They, that? That would, it'd be interesting for them to get the ordinance and look at it and... Uh, so it's a, it's just a cleaning up of the ordinances is what it is. Okay, and then that would be addressed by the city or by the county? Well, the city would create the ordinance, which, and the reason we're having to do that is because we have a little different 
uh, need mm -hmm. in the city than say someone in Cedar Grove does. You might be in Cedar Grove and want to have hogs and cows in your on your property, which is perfectly right. fine. Whereas in the city, you don't need to do that. Right. Or you may need want to let your dogs just run free on your property. Right. Uh, whereas in the city, there is a leash law. Okay. So that's the kind of stuff. Our our level of uh, ordinance will be higher than the right. county's level of ordinance, but the people that enforce it need to know the difference so right. they can enforce it differently. Properly. Right. Properly. right. Um, I'll tell you what, before we go to item seven, let's take a short commercial break and then we'll come Got back it. and go to item Sounds seven. Good. We'll be right back. Come in today to Sports Emporium for an expert shoe fitting using our Atrex I-Step foot scanner. Our staff will perform a computerized analysis of your feet and recommend the best shoes for your specific foot type. We carry top name brand performance athletic footwear by Brooks, Asics, Nike, Mizuno, New Balance, and more. Also, we carry the largest selection of Crocs in town, a great selection of caps by New Era and the Game, and Oakley and Ray-Ban sunglasses. Stop in today at Sports Emporium Ivy Place Shopping Center, Dublin. Proud sponsor of the Leprechaun Road Race. Score big with the Dublin Piggly Wiggly. Catch all the savings throughout the store. Score big with fresh produce, grocery items, dairy products, and don't fumble the handoff. Choose 100% certified Angus beef from Dublin Piggly Wiggly. Taste the difference today. Fresh food, friendly service, Piggly Wiggly. Glazed and chocolate covered donuts. Cheese straws, brownies, and bonbons too. Pettifer's pies and pastries made just for you. Wedding cakes, birthday cakes, and cookie trays custom made for your special day. Williamson's Bakery is conveniently located at 1634 Veterans Boulevard in the Oak Shopping Center. Open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Williamson's Bakery, baking everyday special since 1965. Hey, welcome back to the show. As always, have a great time talking with you, Mayor Best. I enjoy spending time with you and thank you for taking the time uh, to, I appreciate to being share here. these um, concerns here in these yeah. council meetings for the folks that may not be able to make it out to right. the meetings. Um, number seven, very interesting here. Um, this is on the resolution extending the memorandum on extended stay hotels. Let's take a few minutes and, and make sure that our citizens understand okay. what we're talking about here. What what we're trying to prevent and we're wanting to be very careful about it that's why we need the extension on the moratorium because we hadn't you got to be sure you're lawful and and thoughtful mm -hmm. of the process uh what we don't want is the hotels on the i-16 corridor uh which are the oh what you call exterior entrance or you know not mm -hmm. interior corridor right uh some of the older properties to become group homes and and homes for uh, a drug haven or yeah something we, else. we just don't need them to become a dilapidated property uh, and that's what the purpose of this uh, moratorium is for us to see what we can do we're not trying to hurt the hotel owners in any way in fact they're they're in the no right uh, what we are trying to do though is protect the we don't want people coming through Dublin and stopping at I-16 and saying, I don't want to stop there anymore. And that's what we're trying to do right. is figure out a way we can keep those properties that are older and not the new flags, as they say, sure. from becoming a uh, low-end rental property. And, and Mayor, I, and I'm not sure if and this may be one of the things you guys are addressing, but I know we do have folks, and, and especially with all the development and construction and new industries you probably have folks that come here that are going to be here for a month or two months right. or three months and maybe they don't want to rent a house they want to live in a hotel right um, because they go home on the weekends or something is, is it difficult trying to do that's what we're trying to figure out yeah okay. the the part where if somebody now at, as it is now i think they could do that easily uh and we don't want to take that away right because there is a need for that what we don't want, though, is for somebody to go live in a hotel right. at the, at the interstate. That's right. 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 Okay. 
And so, so the things that you guys are working on here, and you're working with the hotel owners and the, That's the right. property owners exactly. to try to clean that up and figure out what is the best way. That's to right. Go and Josh there. Powell is taking the lead on looking and seeing what other communities have done, and we're trying to figure out the best way to handle it. Good deal. Good deal. Um, discussion and action on appointments. I know you had one. one we thing did. Uh, Sharish Blackwell who is uh, the executive director of Dublin Rising, is going to fill the unexpired term of Ricky Porter, who resigned from the uh, Dublin, uh, oh heck, we talked about Land Bank Authority. Right, I'm I, sorry. I knew I, it too I'm, and I couldn't think of it. And, uh, <laughs> and she, she will do a great, her, she's got a lot of background in that, she's got a lot of experience in that, and I'm sure she'll do a good job. Council appointed her for that. Uh, then I asked uh, Councilman Johnson, Gary Johnson, and Councilman Bill Brown to serve with me as a uh, subcommittee along with staff on our, it's time for us to start working on our uh, long range land plan. And uh, wanted to get council input on that, so we're, we're starting to work on that. So I asked them to be a part of that with me. Fantastic. Um, citizens' comments. Yes, sir. I, I know we had at least one gentleman had a, a concern that was addressed. Right. Uh, a leaking pipe. And it, yeah, uh, I think so. Lance has got with him after the meeting. Is going to check with that. Okay. And uh, council comments. Um, other than the one, I know we're going to talk about. Right. Um, our city manager Lance Jones um, spoke about the Splice vote. Coming That's right. Up and wanted to encourage people to to get out and vote. Um, for the splice. Absolutely. Um, were there any other council comments? Other? Uh, not really. Uh, I think most of them were pretty generic. Okay. Uh, but uh, that was the main thing, was just wanting to try to get the word out that if you hadn't voted, please vote for the splice. Okay. And it's not e splice, which That's is correct. educational splice. That's and right. I want to be clear to say this is a separate splice from that splice. Exactly. It is. This splice is. Is uh, has done projects like right. the farmers market, the uh, uh, bicentennial plaza. It's run uh, thousands of feet of water and sewer. Uh, it's done uh, economic development. Uh, la our last splash, uh, we gave 15 million, or the, the the voters of the county gave 15 million dollars to the economic development or. Development Authority, which you see has been very helpful as a tool in the bag to get the industries that we have had located and still some looking. Uh, it's not hard to look around and see how effective it has been for this particular splash and how it's worked. And, and let's be clear to say, um, and you and I talked off camera yeah. just a little bit, um, a continuation. To make sure that folks know that, that these projects that are going to be funded through this BLOSS would take place, it wouldn't take place until 2018. That's right. It's and these would be new projects. Exactly. For, um, even though it's, it, it is a continuation of the money, so you're not asking for an additional right. one cent. You're asking to continue that one cent, but you're asking to continue it for new projects. That's exactly right. And, and the other good point about this is, you know, and... Nobody likes taxes. I, I don't like taxes. <laughs> you don't like taxes, you know. I had one of my good friends that uh, is a pretty liberal Democrat tell me on Facebook the other day, he said, well, I'm glad to see my conservative friend is looking at using taxes to help increase the uh, economy and all okay. that. And I said, well, you know, in this case, I, th I think if you have to have a tax, a splash tax is probably the best way to go. Uh, in our case, as you know, we've got 40,000, 50,000 people in Lawrence County. Mm -hmm. uh, in the daytime, coming in and out of here, we probably have 150 or 160, mm -hmm. as that you given, probably know right. uh, better than I. What this does is those folks shop here, mm -hmm. but they also use our roads and use our utilities and use our features in the community. This gives them an opportunity to contribute they to that, to help pay for they get to help things. pay for that, and so, and and I'm not I'm not here to argue whether the East Splash is good or bad. I know there it's been very controversial. Uh, I have my own opinion about it, but I will tell you that this particular splash tax is a very 
uh, well-managed, uh, well-administered uh, money that comes into well, the community. Well, and again, on the East Bloss, to make sure, too, that's already been voted on. That's right. It, it did pass. Right. It'll come up if folks are not happy that's with right. it or, or, like you said, whatever you're in that's favor or right. indifferent. Um, I guess five years from now. That's right. Maybe that would come back up. But this is, this is, and I, I saw a thing in the paper today, it was returned or referred to as regular splossed or something, yeah. maybe as the term That's right. sometimes. Um, Probably a good but, description. But this is city and county yeah. funding for city and county projects. That's right. And so anything from police officers to road repairs, um, recreation, and, and different things. Such That's as right. That. So. Um, any other things, Mayor, in particular that, that you know of that the SPLOST is being used for that we might want to share and make sure people In know? the future one? The, the one, one that's being voted? The one we're asking folks yeah. to Well, to we, uh, mainly right now the, the main, there's not many buildings in it. Most of it is going to be uh, road and water and sewer extensions, economic development. I'm not sure on the county side. Right. Uh, but... Uh, that's the main thing, some improvements in recreation, uh, us contributing our part to that. Uh, Do you know any specifics on that? That's one of the things I've been asked. Uh, the, well, one of the things what, we're looking we're at is extending the uh, splash pad or, or doing a, a community pool or, or either a uh, Olympic size training pool. Uh, what I, there's Lazy River. Mm -hmm. the, the discussion is still going on with that okay. as far as between recreation and city, but that's one of the things. But other than that, it's mainly inf infrastructure and that kind of stuff. Okay. And then that's one of the things I've been asked a lot about was the pool. Yeah. Um, if there was still going to be a pool, where would the pool be built? That's, um, well, that's the that discussion that's stuff. happening, and, and it's not uh, – It's you have to be very careful with a splash because if you get specific to the point, on a project, then you're stuck like with it. But if funds. if the if folks decide we'd rather have a lazy river than a pool, or you know that's what, sure. then you've so got that you've got that flexibility. So if you say recreational, that's right. Purposes or the recreation. That's right. It can it could go in a number of different that's right. directions. So um, great conversation again. We need to take a commercial break and then we'll come back and okay. wrap things up because I think we got something special we need that's to do. Right. Right the, <laughs> we'll be right back. I'm Locke Wilford. Buying the right pre-owned vehicle is easy at Dublin Auto Outlet. Power or style, all are affordable. Dublin Auto Outlet, downtown, across from the new Dairy Queen. Believe Boutique is all about fashion. We carry a large selection of plus-size stylish, trendy clothing. Whether it's jeans and tees, or picots, tunics, and leggings, you can find it here at Believe Boutique. Stop by today to see all the latest hot, hip, and fun spring arrivals. While here, be sure to check out our latest accessories. We have a large selection of stacks, chokers, handbags, and shoes. We are open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and conveniently located at 1817 Rice Avenue in the Williamsburg Shopping Center, directly across from the VA. Believe, Dublin's only plus-size boutique. Bring in a bar of soap for Haiti and receive $2 off your purchase. Uniform Carousel, Dublin's only one-stop shop for high-quality medical apparel, scrubs, lab coats, and uniforms. Why shop online and pay shipping or go out of town when Uniform Carousel will match any price? Drop in today to see all the latest spring arrivals from all the top brands. Gwen Pittman and her friendly staff are eager to help you. Uniform Carousel is conveniently located at 1908 Bellevue Avenue or give them a call at 478-272-0113. Shop local. Shop Uniform Carousel. Okay, welcome back to the show. We're going to wrap up. Um, Mayor Best, we had a great talk today about the council meeting. I think, yeah. I hope we've clearly defined any questions anybody may have about the upcoming SPLOST. Right. And, and one more time, not an East SPLOST, but, That's but right. this is SPLOST for city and county projects. That's right. Um, and, and while we're on that, and we were talking about buildings and, and maybe maintenance yeah. and infrastructure, a lot of good stuff going on in the downtown area. Right. And a lot of folks are, have been asking, um, 
you know, right next to company supply there, it kind of looked like things came to a standstill a little right. bit. Um, give us an update. What's going on? I think we've got good news there. Yeah, well, I think uh, it's the Jackson Plaza is what we're tagging it right now as a project. Uh, I hope we change the name of that to something more. DDA is working on that process right now, okay. Downtown Development Authority. What the stall was, was two things actually. Number one was when we did the very, you know, anytime you're dealing with demolition or uh, rehabilitation, there's unknowns. Right. It's not like building a new structure. So initially it looked fine, looked like everything was a go. Well, after they got the demolishing done, we f found out there may be some structural issues between the buildings where we took the building out. So we left some, right. you some saw, iron. yeah, some iron in between, and that was to let's drop back and punt and see what we need to do. So we got the structural engineers in, they confirm what we need to do. There's a great solution that anytime you've got an engineer that's willing to write off on that, it's pretty well uh, a, a safe right, right. option. So we got that done, and then the second part of that is is the parking lot itself and the extra, excuse me, plaza is going to create more storm water. Well, we've already got a problem there beside Pitt's Toyota with storm water. Uh, sometimes it gets flooded mm -hmm. uh, in a good rain. So what we're doing is tackling that as well while we're doing this downstream. Okay. And so we've called Thomas and Hutton Engineering in, our engineering firm, and they're putting together a plan for the storm water and managing the plaza for us. Good deal. So it, it should crank back up soon. Uh, I cannot give you a day. I've asked for a schedule. Uh, Lance is supposed to be providing me a schedule of what we're looking at and how it will be completed and when it will be completed. And I can probably update you on a future show of, okay. of what that is. But we're back on track and everything's going good. And it's going to be just a really, it's going to be a, such an addition to our downtown. And it's just going to wake up that side of Jackson Street mm -hmm. like the other parking lots did the other side. Well, and let me ask you, and I, I, I hope it's okay to say, but I opened an email this morning. Um, and I think maybe it's a revised or updated rendition of, of what this would look like. Yeah. Do you know if, if that's, is that public yet or is there somewhere it's that anything we got is public. So, so yeah, absolutely. If you can show it, that'll be fine. And, and, uh, it's just keeping in mind, that's a work in progress. Right. You know, so it's it kind of like, it's so kind of like when you're building a house with your wife and she sees the first set of plans and you're going through three more sets. You might want to throw that first set away because it changes. Does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and so speaking on that, um, wrapping up the show today, um, I, I think we, we got one more uh, little piece of business we need to take care of today. Absolutely. I want to tell my beautiful wife, Seal, happy birthday. Today, she is a St. Patrick's Day baby. So she is a... Uh, I will not tell you which birthday this is for. She would kill me. It would be my last birthday. <laughs> but I will tell you that uh, she has uh, meant a lot to me over the years. She supports me in my job as mayor and other uh, other endeavors. And I just want to wish her a happy birthday today and, and love her very much. And we appreciate her and, and her support and, and enabling you yeah. to do the things that yeah. you do. And, and I think you went all out for lunch today. You, you had a big lunch Yeah, we're going to have today. a big lunch for her, and i got a parade people. lined up for her tomorrow, or at least she thinks it's for her. <laughs> Good job, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you for joining us, and as always, we want to remind you it's a great day for business in Dublin and Lawrence County.